Supra Therapeutic INR. And first, let's talk a little bit about what INR actually is. It stands for International Normalized Ratio. And the INR value is actually an equation. It is equal to the patient's PT divided by the normal PT, all raised to the power of ISI. And ISI stands for International Sensitivity Index. And just in case you don't know, PT is the prothrombin time. And essentially, the PT tells you the time that it takes to get the plasma to clot. And the normal INR in our blood is about 1.0. But patients who are on warfarin will have a higher INR. And their INR is monitored. And the goal is to keep their INR between 2 and 3. Essentially, we don't want patients to form blood clots. So for example, let's say the patient had a pulmonary embolism or a deep venous thrombosis or any condition in which they formed a blood clot, we want to keep them in a situation in which they won't form it again. So we want to keep their INR higher. And the higher the INR, the lower the risk to form a blood clot essentially because it takes longer to form a blood clot. Because it takes longer to form a blood clot, the higher the INR, the greater the risk of bleeding. So this is a very delicate balance that you're playing, that you're trying to keep it between two and three, and you don't want it to go too high. But sometimes it does go high. And when the INR value is very high, above three, it's known as supra therapeutic. So what I'm going to discuss is how would you manage this super therapeutic INR? How do you bring it back down to be within that goal of two to three if a patient is on warfarin? So we have two categories. We have patients who have an elevated INR who are not bleeding and we have patients who have an elevated INR who are bleeding. So let's talk about this category first. And the first is a patient who is not bleeding, but their INR is tested and it's between 3 and 4.5. This scenario is the most common finding. All you really need to do is just hold their warfarin. In other words, stop it. And normally, you discontinue the warfarin for a few days, five days, for example, is usually adequate. So that's the first scenario. Second scenario is, again, non-bleeding patient, but their INR is between 4.5 and 10. Again, you stop the warfarin, but in addition to stopping the warfarin, you also give something to reverse the warfarin, known as vitamin K. And the vitamin K that's given is a low dose, usually 0 0.5 milligrams to 1 milligram, and given orally PO. The final scenario is when the INR is greater than 10. Of course, you stop the warfarin, just like the previous case, but here you give a higher dose of vitamin K, so usually 2.0 to 5.0 milligrams. Now, keep in mind, though, that this vitamin K doesn't work immediately. It takes about 6 to 24 hours for this vitamin K to have effect. So this is something that is not immediate in terms of its reversal. Now we get to a scenario where the patient has an elevated INR and they are bleeding. Well, regardless of what the INR value is, you have to stop the warfarin immediately. And then you have to urgently reverse the warfarin because the patient is bleeding. And that is accomplished with fresh frozen plasma. And fresh frozen plasma is given because it has a much more urgent uh, effect. It contains all the clotting factors. In addition to giving the fresh frozen plasma, you also give vitamin K, but this time you give a higher dose, usually 5 to 10 milligrams, and also instead of giving it orally, you give it IV. And one final thing I wanted to mention is if the bleeding is life-threatening, 
LTE, life-threatening event, then in addition to fresh frozen plasma and vitamin K, you also give prothrombin complex. So this is the table that you should memorize of how to reverse the INR if the INR is super therapeutic. Now let's take a look at a few vignettes. While on call, you are paged to evaluate a 91-year-old woman with shortness of breath. She has been admitted several days ago for congestive failure in the setting of rapid atrial fibrillation. Her past medical history is significant for atrial fib and hypertension. Medications include warfarin, atenolol, and furosemide. On arrival, you find her in moderate respiratory distress. Physical exam and lab data include an INR of 4.1, are consistent with pulmonary hemorrhage. You consult the patient's primary care physician and inform her of the patient's condition. You both agree that the patient's coagulopathy needs to be addressed. Patient's coagulopathy will be most rapidly corrected by. Okay, well, this is a bleeding patient. And the INR doesn't really matter if what their INR value is. In a bleeding patient, you stop the warfarin, and then you urgently need to reverse that INR, and you do that with fresh frozen plasma. So the answer to this is C. Vitamin K is also given, but the key word there is most rapidly. Vitamin K doesn't rapidly correct it. It takes 6 to 24 hours. Protamine sulfate, by the way, is to reverse heparin, not warfarin. Next question, an 80-year-old man who is taking warfarin because of a history of atrial fibrillation is found to have on routine blood work an INR of 7.2. He reports no bleeding. Which of the following is the best immediate management of this problem? Okay, well, he has no bleeding, and he's the 4.5 to 10.0 category for INR. In this category, you just give a low dose of vitamin K, usually 0 0.5 to 1 milligram, and of the answer choices, that would be choice B. Hold a warfarin for three days. Uh, yes, that's part of it, but you also need to give vitamin K as well. 10 milligrams is too high. Fresh frozen plasma is only if the person is bleeding, and DDADP is not part of warfarin reversal. Next question. 80-year-old man who's taking warfarin because of history of AFib presents to the ER with syncopal episode. His stool has been black. His hemoglobin is 65 and INR of 7.2. Which of the following is the best immediate approach to the management of the raised INR? Well, his stool being black kind of makes me think of a GI bleed, in particular an upper GI bleed. So this is, of course, a bleeding patient, and he's got an INR that's super therapeutic. Well, he definitely needs fresh frozen plasma. And in addition, you probably want to give a high dose of uh, vitamin K, such as the uh, choice B. But the best immediate approach is the fresh frozen plasma because that most urgently reverses the warfarin.